Hi there. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, just get started. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, hello. Um, Zay Day. I'm sorry if I pronounced the name wrong. <laughs> Yes, good afternoon. My name is Zadie Ortiz. It rhymes uh, with lady, so it's easy uh, to remember. <laughs> okay, yeah. Jim, we have been in a couple of books, love, right? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's good to see you again. Good to see you in uh, charge. Yeah, I think we did one. I forgot the name, uh, the book, actually, but uh, I think we did one of the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Um. So, Zadie, is it your first book club in R4DS or you have been in other book clubs? Um, so in R4DS, yes, I have been in a book club, um, on Shiny, uh, but it was more led by the R ladies, the, our local R oh. ladies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Good to see you. So this is your first book club in R4DS. Yes. Great. Um, then we have Amanda. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, great. It's all good. Yeah, good, good to see you. Um, so we are just chatting. Um, I know Jim has been in a couple of book clubs. I also, and Zaidi, she is this uh, first book club here. And I'm not sure, like, is it your first book club? In it Africa? is, yeah. Ah, I see. Right. Okay, so... Thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Shamsuddin. We will do a little bit of intro uh, so that we understand ourselves and, you know, format of the book club and just do some general introduction about how it works. And then we can uh, see the structure. Well. So my name is Shamsuddin Muhammad. I'm from Nigeria and PhD student. Anyway, um, yeah, PhD. So yesterday I defended my PhD and I passed my Viva. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah so, yeah, so I'm working on uh, machine learning, uh, NLP, uh, some related data. So I'm doing my PhD at University of Porto, Portugal, but I'm from Nigeria. And yesterday I defended my PhD uh, successfully for the Viva. So I'm highly excited to be in this book club um, to coordinate. Um, as coordinator, it's just to keep sure that anybody that is going to present next one has signed off, you know, so that's the task of a coordinator. I coordinate several book clubs here, like um, R4 Data Science, um, uh, Advanced Book uh, advanced book Club, uh, R Book Club, and also uh, R Packages and a couple of other things. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited to be in this one as well, and thank you. So let me hand over to the next one, uh, just to introduce before we start the, yeah. Um, Jim? Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. Um, I live in the Chicago region. Um, I've, uh, I've been using R for hmm, four years or so now um, and have been in a few other book clubs, uh, maybe five or six, in fact. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be in this one with this book. Um, Next week, I may not, in fact, I will not be available. There's a, there's a conference here in the city, in town, that because it's so close, I'll, I'll join them. So I'll, I'll miss next week, but, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. Cool. All right. Um, we have um, Zaid next. Yeah, so um, Zaid Ortiz, I was invited by Amanda. So thank you, Amanda, for inviting me. Um, I live in North Carolina, originally from Puerto Rico. Um, I have a PhD in computer science uh, from the local university in North Carolina State and um, been working with R for several years. And I mentioned before that I have participated in a, in a book club uh, through Our Ladies. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my first book club. Uh, actually, I just started uh, the Slack on, on R for Data Science. So yeah, so, thank you. Okay. Yeah, finally, Amanda. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda. Um, I live in the DC, Maryland area. I'm a data scientist. I also have a PhD in statistics. Mm -hmm. I was trying to quick think how long I've been using R. It's been somewhere between 10 and 15 years. I'm not sure. 
um, yeah, <laughs> and I've um, used Arcaris. Uh, you know, it's great, but I was kind of curious about uh, Torch for R to see how it compares. So mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Um, and I also will be out next week as well. So oh. it might be a small group. <laughs> yeah 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 so if it happens that uh i can see now we have four heads um maybe we can skip the next week to have a like a kind of break um so we can um you know regroup a week after uh, that would be a cool idea for me um yeah so i actually like um for me for example when i started in this book in art somebody said you are in computer science why are you coming to our groups? You should be doing Python. You are doing, you know, all those. Uh, but the, you know, this community, I love the community, the help and everything. When I started my PhD, you know, things I cannot program quite well. And with this community, I really learn a lot and do a lot. And that really helped me, show me, and also to help others. So yeah, doing this book club was really great. So, um, so because of that, um, we have a couple of uh, people faces here that um, this is your first time for us um, in R4DS. So I will take us a quick through on how the uh, book club works and so that we can uh, get the idea. All right, so um, we have um, a book uh, here um, that we use to write notes for each chapter. So each week we have um, one person uh, to volunteer to present a chapter. And, um, you know, John has done uh, a great work by, you know, providing the template. Each chapter is, you know, nothing inside. It's just template. So if you are doing chapter three, you can just come and populate with the content of chapter two. So um, as I said, each week what we do, everyone can volunteer to present a chapter. If you pre volunteer to present a chapter, you can come here. This one, um, if you look into the Slack channel, there is a pin post. So this post, you can see the link of this sheet. You can see the link of this book. So this book, you can uh, clone it from here. So you can see the book here. You can clone it. And, you know, if you are presenting a chapter, you can prepare the slide, the chapter and push it. Um, so the presentation, as we all know, is not going through deep into whatsoever, but just um, review the materials and demonstrate, um, you know, the core concept uh, presented in each chapter. Um, more information on how to present is available here. So John also and the community prepared, um, you know, how to do uh, do the presentation. Um, you know, this is R for this uh, scientific this, how to present, for this repository, all this stuff um, has been specified in this uh, repository. Um, also, um, if you don't care, the, uh, the uh, presentation is automatically recorded and is uploaded into GitHub and um, YouTube. So if you do care about, um, uh, you don't want to be recorded, then you can tell John in the channel, you can just, um, you know, tag him that you don't want to, your recording uh, to be able, so he can take care of that. Um, what we normally do is we try to cover one chapter per week, but um, as I see this, uh, book touch uh there are a couple of chapters that are very small so i'm wondering maybe if we come and before next week we can decide whether to go and do a, a single chapter or we can combine two chapters so for example the um overview chapters uh, uh the touch and tensors they have touch is i think the chapter is two one page and tensors so we can combine this so we'll talk about that so it is okay to split chapters and of course, um, we will observe all the breaks and, you know, uh, take some kind of off if we are not coming. For example, the next week, if uh, we have many people off, we can, you know, take a break. So that's basically the overview about these, um, where we will be putting our slides. And this is where you can just come over wherever you want. You can just put your name, um, you know, you are interested to present that. So you can see here automatically because, because today I will do the overview of how the book club works. Um, I just put my name. And so anybody can put maybe one, two, whatsoever you like. So that's a quick intro about how this book club works. Um, the next thing I think, um, let me see this. Um, the next thing is, um, going through the book to see what the book covers. 
So um, unfortunately, I haven't put the uh, my slide in this template. After all, I'll push it. I have my slide in PowerPoint that I will share just to go through the overview chapter. So uh, what we will see today is just overview on how this work. And you know, uh, the next couple of weeks, um, we'll start with going to chapter two, chapter three, and whatsoever. As I already said, if you look at chapter two, you can see this is the only content in chapter two, and you can see chapter three. Um, so maybe I think um, we can agree maybe whether to combine chapter two because it's just about installation also, and then and chapter three next week. Um, but just a general introduction about this book, uh, what we'll be covering, uh, we can see that uh, uh, it is Torch, which is basically the um, interface for PyTorch, and PyTorch now is the, um, we can say the in a way gold standard for all these you know deep learning stuff and um, touch in the uh, interface. Um, so the book is divided into three sections. Uh, the first section is touch basics, uh, where it introduces the building blocks for building uh, what we will see when we want to um, train machine learning. I mean deep learning models, uh, so such as tensors, optimizers. You know uh, what it means by automatic differentiation, and what we mean by models, and all those stuff. Uh, this chapter will cover that. So you will have, you know, some concept on how touch works and uh, you'll be fluent in touch. And by the end of this chapter, you'll be able to code a neural network from scratch. So this is basically what the first section is. So the chapter is divided into three sections and this is what um, the first section covers. So we can see we have this tensor, autograd that do automatic differentiation, minimize the autograd. Um, you know, we have models, optimizers, loss functions. So this all this building block that allows you to, next to train machine learning model, uh, deep learning model end to end um, will be covered. Then the next one, which is um, as second step, um, deep learning with Python, with Torch. So this next second step of the book, second stage is where we can train deep learning. We learn the not and balls in the first stage. Uh, so this is dedicated in machine learning uh, where you can have topic workflow and domain related flow. And you can see this is basically the overview of the chapter, um, how we can load the training data, right? So if you are doing, uh, for example, uh, image, how can you load image data set? If you are using NLP, how can you load data set? If you are using time series, tabular data, audio classification. So we have different way to load because they have different answers to do that. So all these stuff. So this um, chapter will take us through how we can do all this stuff uh, trend, maybe image segmentation, tabular data, time series, audio classification. Unfortunately, I haven't seen any NLP task here. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, so this is the content of chapter uh, section two of the book, and we'll try to cover this. So this uh, from chapter 12 up to chapter 22. And lastly, um, the third section, um, it doesn't talk really about, you know, uh, deep learning um, training, but some other stuff that have been used with touch. So touch can be used in other scientific applications, uh, such as matrix computation, discrete Fourier, uh, Fourier transformation and wobbly transformation. So this chapter cover this concept on how to do this with touch. Um, so this marks the end of the book from the three sections. The first section, um, you know, do the basic of touch. The second uh, section, do the deep learning and the third section do some scientific stuff that uh, can be used with that. So that's um, in a nutshell, uh, the uh, basic and overview of what this book is. And the next thing is um, we will start um, hopefully the next week. Uh, I mean, week after uh, we can start with the uh, next section that we have here, Torch, and you can see here, and then we have our tensors. So, that's the um, little intro I have about the overview of the book and hopefully in the couple of weeks we can have many volunteers to start putting their names uh, in various sections and um, yeah and I hope we will have a very good um, discussion till the end of the book and uh, yeah so that's what I got and uh, now I, I will give the floor to people um, to talk about the, what their experience uh, about. By the way, um, I think um, um, Jim has already shared something about installation um, of, of, uh, of Torch. I haven't done so yet because I was busy with my PhD defense. 
but um if um you know jim can share some experience before you know other people uh maybe that would be helpful <laughs> yeah thank you yeah there's a, a maybe a couple useful points um because torch is a a, a very large installation when you when you say install packages and get the the uh, the package is is essentially a downloader, and so um, the first time you run Library Torch, Torch will go out to the web and download mm -hmm. a, a very large um, um, installation file. Um, may, maybe one time saving shortcut um, if your R Studio is only pointing to CRAN. Um, it takes some time to do the download and the, um, we'll, we'll say the compiling or the creation of that library. It's 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 on the order of a gig. But um, if your R Studio session in the global options points to a package manager like our studio's package manager, there are pre-compiled binaries already there that um, if, 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 if that's your source of the package rather than CRAN, it, it saves an enormous amount of time to grab the pre-compiled binaries. And I'll, I'll stop. Does, does that kind of make sense? It, yeah, yeah. I'm, I think it's judging. Be, yeah, it would be quite useful, um, Jim, if you volunteer for the installation chapter. <laughs> uh, well, and then second point, I yeah. use I use Linux, um, uh -huh. the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, I think Mac users, in some ways, have it easier here, um, okay. depending on which Mac architecture you have. But um, I wanted GPU compute. Uh -huh. um, the, the default, if, if you just take Torch and wait for it to install, it's likely it would imp install for the CPU compute mm -hmm. and you could do everything in this book. It's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you happen to have a nice graphics card and big problems like NLP, mm -hmm. um, there's some pretty amazing things that are possible speed-wise if get CUDA installed to use the NVIDIA uh, hardware. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote a little bit of a, a blog okay. on the steps I took mostly <laughs> because I was foolish. So I had a computer that died um, this spring and uh, and I was not smart enough to have kept notes about how I built it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I wrote a blog post for future me. <laughs> <laughs> so when this happens again, <laughs> I can follow those steps. If it happens to be useful to someone else, you know, that's a wonderful thing. But that, that was really my intention selfishly was for future me because it's not obvious necessarily how to get um, these other pieces in place mm -hmm. behind um, behind R. So so CUDA is a is an is a hardware install that comes from NVIDIA that, that goes with your video card. And so it's a little bit cryptic installing that sort of thing. In any case, I, I put the, the notes mm -hmm. in the check. Slack and and if they're confusing, just ignore them. You don't need them. <laughs> but but if you're interested in using Linux, um, um, which which I would recommend to be honest, instead of Windows. Um, what about Mac? Well, that's the thing. I think the the Mac installs are 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 cleaner in this regard because they're close to Linux, and you can get the binaries from the the R Studio Package Manager. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So. So maybe investigate getting the pre-compiled binaries from from our studio. So when you say pre-compiled and these terms, what do you mean? Yeah, um, when you install some of the 
big packages from CRAN, you see in the console, yes, or Fortran or C being compiled, mm -hmm. and the text just flies by so fast, and and that's because what CRAN hosts is the source code. Okay. And it's, okay. And it's literally compiling for your machine when uh -huh. you do the installation, but if you grab the pre-compiled binaries, you skip the compiling step. And okay. Just take the binaries for your architecture. I see. And 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 I, I could look up there is a nice R Studio article about using their pre-compiled binaries uh -huh. to, to save you time. And uh, it's only worth it here because Torch is huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that TensorFlow is also huge. They're they're massive packages. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Um that's helpful. I maybe should ask, have have you all tried to install Torch? Not yet. Uh, good luck. Okay. I'm available for your questions in the Slack too. If when when you when you encounter some heartburn, <laughs> it, it's likely to happen because there's some complexity here de depending on what you want to end up with. And um yeah, in fact, um when you install Torch, it kind of looks like it's installed, but the first time you say library torch, it's going to surprise you. <laughs> okay, right, right, interesting. Okay, cool, right. So um, yeah, so anybody that's interested for the, um, I think by the way, maybe we can combine chapter two and three next meeting, a uh, week after. So since we are not meeting next week, uh, let's meet week after. So we can combine chapter two and three. Um, chapter two, if you look at it, is um, you know, on touch and how to get it, and chapter three on it is on tensors. So we can good. combine these two chapters. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, feel free to you know fill your availability in the sheet, and that will be um interesting. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. So that's what I got for today. Um. Anyone want to add something? Maybe Amanda or Zile. Uh, just that I noted too that the NLP was missing um, in the book, so I'm curious to see if anybody's using this package yet for NLP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like um, you know NLP now is the things yeah, you know uh, a lot mm -hmm. of things I've been doing in NLP and you know and is mysteriously missing <laughs> in the chapters. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. cool. All right, so I think um, if um, we are done for today and um, just the overview and introduction for all of us. We know ourselves and uh, um, uh, now if there is anyone who wants to talk on anything, then I'm free to do that. But if without anything, then I think, um, yes, Jim, you want to say something? Um, if you need any help forking the repo or cloning the repo also, um, just chime in on Slack. Happy to... Mm -hmm. um, um, any any doubts whatsoever, just ask. Yeah, sure. happy, to, happy to help with the documentation. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be forking it right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So thank you very much um, for coming. And uh, uh, I think, by the way, uh, let's make it clear now. Next week is, we're gonna, we're not going to meet, yeah? And we're gonna meet week after. Does that sound good? Okay. Sounds good. Well, um, thank you very much for joining and uh, see you uh, in two weeks time. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.